We heard Jesus' own mission statement this morning. Did you hear it? Did you catch it? Did you know he even had one? I'm going to talk about it, and at the end, I'm going to give you one thing that you can do right now to make that mission a reality. Jesus' mission statement is that quote that we heard this morning from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I say it's his mission statement because he stood up in the synagogue and claimed that mission for his own. These words are fulfilled in your hearing. So what's that mean for you? It means if we are his students and his followers, and his spirit is our spirit, then his mission is ours too to bring good news to the oppressed, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, and God's favor. To comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. But that's not as easy as it sounds, right? If you're anything like me, you're wondering, how do we wear a mantle of praise When our spirits are indeed so faint, when there's so much pain and mourning and loss right now. And how do we proclaim, that is, proclaim spread to others this message of good news in our daily lives, God's favor and gladness and praise during a time like this time, like right now? Won't that sound disingenuous? The true answer to that is that joy is never disingenuous, and the joy of Jesus is a fire that burns even in our darkest night. Let's talk for a moment about what joy actually is. Henry Nouwen described joy as the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. The world's promising bad news. Did you hear it? Sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, death. Why don't those things matter? They do, but the even deeper truth is that you are unconditionally loved by the God who created all things. And that God has you. God has you. You are his and none of those things can separate you from that love. That's why you can endure all of those things, because in them, you can have joy. Or as the Tizay song puts it, in our darkest night, God kindles a fire that never dies away. Joy is knowing God's unconditional love at the intersection of our longing for that love to be fulfilled at last and to receive the God that we long for. This longing in us is good news because it shows us that we were meant to live, created to live for so much more than this moment now and how things are. We're meant to live for so much more than the solutions to our darkness and suffering and pain that the world offers to us. We were meant to live for nothing short, nothing short of pure love, pure goodness, pure beauty. Meant to live for the God who is all of those things and so much more. Don't get me wrong, there is so much to do out there right now, so much to this mission of Jesus that we're called to go on with him. For Isaiah, it was building up the ancient ruins, raise up the former devastations, repairing the ruined cities. You might not have physical ruins to build up, but I know God is calling you to raise up devastations. There's ruined things you're called to repair, relationships that need to be reconciled, lives that need to be raised up. God promises joy if you follow that mission. The poetry of Isaiah certainly puts it best. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. 
My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. That's what God is doing in us too, in you, causing right relationships, reconciliation, and praise to spring up so the whole world can see. That's remarkable. And you are remarkable because you have been called on by God to live that mission. You are remarkable. So here's the one thing that I promise that you can do right now to fulfill Jesus' mission. Talk to someone else that you know about how they are finding joy right now with everything going on. And share with them how you are finding joy right now with everything going on. All right, that sounds like two things, but that one small step, that one conversation will take you down a path of proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. No matter what you're experiencing right now, I pray you experience the joy of God's unconditional love for you. His light in your darkest of nights. And I pray that you follow this teacher, this Master Jesus, on this incredible mission every single day for the whole world to see. Amen. 